varieties. Remarkably, certain flowers are designed to know what time it is. California poppies, morning glories, and daylilies are three beautiful examples. Opening and closing with clock-like precision, they are sensitive to atmospheric pressure, length of daylight, temperature, and humidity, and must therefore have built-in biorhythms. Each leaf of a plant is also a marvel. Long before man discovered how to harness solar power, the Creator installed miniature solar panels in every green leaf. As the leaf expands, it is programmed to face the sun to receive its energy. This energy powers its chemical factories. As a result, carbon dioxide is absorbed, oxygen is released, and hydrogen is used in making sugars. How ingenious of our God to design leaves to absorb man's waste gas and release the oxygen which every creature needs for survival. Photosynthesis is also the basis for all our food supply. Thankfully, countless numbers of God's little green machines perform this service every day. Flowering plants are such a testimony to God's provision. Not only are they critical in terms of providing food and medicine and various other aspects of life as we know it, but we would simply not be able to exist without the flowering plants. Well, that ties in with the large group of animals called the arthropods. One of the groups of arthropods would be the insects. Insects need the plants, and plants most assuredly need the insects in terms of pollination, in terms of keeping the plants fertilized on a year-to-year -year basis. Uh, Genesis 2.9 tells us that God created uh, green plants pleasant to the sight and good for food. Uh, plants use the amazing process of photosynthesis to trap energy from the sun, to put together carbon dioxide molecules from the air, water molecules from the soil, uh, to make sugar molecules a basic uh, building block for all of the other food groups. Where do the plants get the carbon dioxide? We breathe it out. Animals breathe out the carbon dioxide. Plants absorb that carbon dioxide. Uh, they absorb the water. They release oxygen from the water molecules so we can breathe it in, burn the sugar to produce the carbon dioxide that they can absorb to make more sugar. You may get the idea all of these parts have to fit together at the same time. That's one thing as we look at the creation account, how God made plants, animals, people, all the physical features of the universe to fit together in an intricate pattern reflecting his glory. Food, oxygen, medicine, fuel, raw materials. Surely the Lord designed plants for our benefit. The rich diversity of flowering plants and the many purposes they serve all point to a wise and compassionate Creator. Though magnificent in bloom, the glory of the flower quickly fades. Scripture likens man's life on earth to a flower, so quick to pass away. Therefore, how important it is for each of us to seek everlasting life today. Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth. So God created every living thing that moves, and God saw that it was good. In the book of Genesis, we read that God created everything to be very good. And though sin has since injured creation, the fish, the birds, and all creatures still testify to God's goodness and wisdom. We'll now turn our attention to the Lord's incredible creatures. Living in the waters of the world are creatures more magnificent than mankind could ever imagine. The enormous assortment of ocean dwellers speaks of the unlimited ingenuity of our great creator. And each sea creature has been designed with remarkable functionality. God equipped the octopus with a form of jet propulsion, suction cup technology, and self-adjusting camouflage far superior to any man-made design. Watch as this giant octopus morphs into a rock with algae. Its color, shape, and texture 
are all transformed in an instant. The squid on the left is a male. He shows a brownish-red courtship pattern toward the female, while simultaneously showing a white fighting pattern on his opposite side to ward off rival males. As he switches sides, his markings actually flip. Dual simultaneous signaling demonstrates God's engineering supremacy. Underwater symbiotic relationships reveal perfect foresight in design planning. Sea anemones are poisonous, yet God has enabled certain fish to safely cohabitate in their environment. For example, clownfish are designed with an immunity to the anemone's poison. This could not have been inherited, as prior generations would have been killed and gone extinct before evolving a beneficial immunity. The schooling pattern of certain fish is still being researched. The ability for fish to dart with synchronized movements reveals the guiding hand of a grand conductor. Different species of fish have been relegated to dwell at specific levels of the ocean depths. This capability is the result of a specially designed air bladder, which secretes gases from the bloodstream, regulating the pressure, maintaining equilibrium allowing the fish to survive at various water pressures within a range determined by the creator. One of my absolutely favorite sea creatures is the pearly nautilus or the chambered nautilus. Here's a shell like you might find in a Florida shell shop and when you cut these down the middle, woo, look at that, all these little chambers inside. Uh, the animal that lives in the last chamber here is essentially a squid. It has lots of little tentacles coming out the front like that. All these little chambers enable it to regulate its buoyancy like a submarine does. Inside that amazing squid, uh, there's a brain. There's an eye that sees the world like we do. Uh, there's a digestive system with salivary glands and a pancreas gland. They have three different hearts. They're as complex inside as we are. And yet, uh, fossils of this kind of creature are among the first to be found. Initial complexity, a marvelous testimony to God's creativity. When I look at the sea creatures that God has created, I look in particular to the fish. They are amazing creatures, starting with their streamlined efficiency, the fact that they are designed to extract oxygen from the water in such an efficient manner, the fact that they have such a pleasing aesthetic values, and also, of course, the great quantities of food they provide for man. Fish have always been fish, according to the fossil record. Yes, fish certainly are an incredible feature of God's living creation. The obvious sophistication variety and beauty of sea creatures, shout out, a master artist created all things for his good pleasure. Birds are among the most captivating creatures on Earth. We marvel at their spectacular colors, their streamlined shapes, and their ability to fly with grace and ease. For centuries, man attempted to imitate the flight of a bird. It was only in the 20th century that he succeeded in controlled flight. To this day, in order to improve the aerodynamics of the plane, man will return to study God's marvelous avian design. Consider some of the Creator's design features. A bird's bones are lightweight and virtually hollow. They're supported inside by struts and honeycombed with air sacs. 
These lightweight bones are designed so efficiently 